Dylan asks, what is the most difficult part of a spacesuit for you to replicate? Why, it's the same part of every spacesuit that is difficult to replicate, and that is the bloody visor. Visors, man, they are an ass kicker. <clears throat> First of all, getting bubble-free vacuum forms is really, really complicated and difficult. Getting optically clear vacuum forms, when you're pulling plastic over a buck, you end up with artifacts from the plastic touching. Ryan Nagata has some amazing methodologies he's built for pulling optically clear, really lovely visors. And the effort he has to put into that is tremendous. Things like baking all the water out of polycarbonate or acrylic for seven days at temperature before he pulls the vacuum form so he gets bubble-free forms. That is exhausting. On the spacesuit, I replicated a Boeing Starliner suit for an exhibit at Canaveral that's opening in the next week. Um, and on that front, I actually contracted a 3D printing company in China that 3D prints large clear pieces because I wanted to see if I could 3D print a visor. And I think someday I will be able to, but it's not today. Um, the piece that I got back was beautiful. However, uh, in, the, in the laying down of the layers of the 3D print of the clear visor, there is no way to get rid of what it ended up being a sort of polarization effect uh, when, you, when you moved the visor. And that polarization effect was something that was going to be clearly visible in a museum display, and it would take you out of looking at this spacesuit and thinking of it for what it represented, which is it is a replica of a spacesuit. Anything that removes that you're like, oh, I wonder why that's like that, that's not the experience you want in a museum piece. So I ended up using that beautiful piece to make a plaster buck, which I then sent to Bill Duran and hired him to pull some vacuum forms for me. Um, but once you have pulled an optically clear visor, and again, I mean, for my spacesuits for G4, I actually had those blown, which is its own set of issues because I had one inside the other, which means they had to be blown to a high consistency. And then I had to mount them into a, a bearing, not a bearing race, but a kind of a securing race for them to sit inside of and be pinned. Uh, it was an engineering challenge to get that to work. Oh, that wasn't, yeah, that was for the G4 suit. Um, so once you have gotten your optically clear visor for a space suit, Frequently, spacesuits have gold coating, and that is to provide a, a huge amount of sun shading for the astronauts. That gold coating is also really, really difficult to get done on a per piece basis. That's the first thing, because companies that do this, that gold plate visors for the light shielding, they're not really interested in that one piece you've got. They do stuff for the big companies like Dave Clark and ILC and, and, and Aerospace, and they do production runs, which means when you ask them to stop a production run and do your one piece, they're gonna charge you, well, they have to, for all that setup and downtime of their equipment. So it can be like, you know, $1,000 to get this coating on. And if you were doing 100, it would be way less than 1,000 bucks a piece, but that's the reality of going to a job shop that does this professionally and asking them to do a one-off or a two-off. Um, Ryan Nagata has worked out some beautiful methodologies for getting gold visors. Again, they're still quite labor intensive and they can be pretty delicate. Uh, I am all ears if you have a vacuum metalizing company and are interested in taking uh, small runs of visors to coat. Whew, yeah, you can reach out to us here in the comments and I will reach back out because uh, that's a bugbear in this in this industry among us, amongst us spacesuit replicators. One more? All right. Let's see here. <clears throat> Lee Marsh. Hi, Lee. Good to see you again. Would you ever design your own costume to fit an ex into an existing movie universe such as Aliens? Yes. Yes. Yes, I would. Um, I might not have said that a couple of years ago, but in the last couple of years, really working on that spacesuit for G4, 
which is the first time I ever designed and built a spacesuit space from scratch, obviously using tons of NASA reference material and tons of their uh, uh, engineering guidelines in terms of the covering and the form factors. But it's the first time I took a suit to its own aesthetic end that was nobody's but mine. And it gave me a lot more uh, confidence as a designer. Uh, that I that I could implement a point of view and be deeply satisfied in what that point of view ended up generating. So yes, I also appreciate that you threw me the softball of alien or aliens as the universe, uh, the alien universe as a place that I might design a costume because really specifically, the aesthetics of the costume in the alien universe are phenomenal. Um, and I'll include all of the alien universe I. I love the spacesuits from Alien. I love the Colonial Marines armor from Aliens. I love the, uh, oh yeah, some of the suits from Alien 3, Covenant and, 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 uh, and Prometheus. Both of those spacesuits are magnificent works of art. Uh, both of those done by our friends at FBFX out of London. Um, yeah, that is, the alien universe has put out some inconsistent movies but really consistently magnificent production design. That, that absolutely links almost all of the Alien franchise together. So yeah, yeah, Ridley, if you're watching, I'd love to make a costume for the next Alien film. Or I mean, you know, who, who knows who might, who might helm it? Uh, I, would, I, would love to, I would love to contribute. Um, thanks so much for all those amazing questions, everybody. Um, the emotional stuff is, I just wanna say one last time, go easy on yourself. Uh, being able to forgive yourself for your own proclivities is the most one of the most important parts of being a human. And I feel like I'm just learning how to do it at 55. Um, it is an ongoing practice. Uh, so be gentle on yourselves. Take good care of each other. Thank you guys for joining me for this live stream. I'll see you uh, in July. And until then, uh, Adam Savage out. Have a good day. Thank you so much for watching. If you'd like to support us even further, you can by becoming a tested member. Uh, details are, of course, below, but it includes all sorts of perks and we're building them all the time. You get advanced word and behind the scenes photos of some of our projects, questions, you get to ask direct questions during my live streams, and we have some members only videos, including the Adam real time series of unbroken, unedited shots of me working here in the shop. They are weirdly meditative. Thank you guys so much. I'll see you on the next one.